When talking about language, the first kind of questions that come up usually revolve about around where does language come from. And so we can address this in two different ways. First would be the evolutionary origin of language or humans as a whole, biological capacity for language, okay? or our predisposition to use language, or um, our ability to use language. That differs from the historical development of specific languages. So that's where we're looking at how did the English language develop, or how did Swahili develop, and then how our languages related. Okay. And so in anthropology, we actually talk about both of those things. So first, we'll start with the evolutionary origins of language. Okay, and why might this be important? Why might we want to think about um, our biological capacity for language? Okay, and then how could we study that? If we know that um, biological anthropology is part of anthropology, how could we study um, or try to figure out where language first developed? So partly that comes through animal language. And let's say we have humans here and chimpanzees here on my left or your right. And up here somewhere, we have a common ancestor. So if we look at um, humans and chimpanzees, and we can see that only humans have the ability to, to develop language or the ability to use language, then we would know that, or we could infer, I should say, theorize that language developed somewhere between the common ancestor, between chimpanzees and humans, and modern humans. If we look in both chimpanzees and humans have this capacity for language or have the ability to use language in very similar ways, then we could infer that our shared ancestor, um, some five-ish millions of years ago, also had this ability or a very similar ability um, to use or acquire language. And so understanding animal languages can help us trace the origins of human language um, through our evolutionary tree. Okay, so if we start looking at language, um, we already said that people's common understanding or non-academic understanding of language is very different than how we think about language. So you'll often hear people say, um, my dog understands English, or my dog understands what I'm saying. Um, or that this parrot can speak, okay? That's not quite the same as language. So remember that language is intentional. Um, I'm trying to convey a message to you. Um, sometimes I unintentionally convey a different message, but the, the intention is that I'm conveying meaning, um, and I'm using symbols, so it's very symbolic. And humans are one of the few animals, and this is debated, some people say the only animal, that can actually use symbols or can think symbolically. Okay, so that's an important aspect. So when we hear about parrots um, talking, um, what they're really doing is just mimicking human speech. Um, and they're not consciously trying to convey meaning to you, okay? Not in the same way. It's not symbolic, which is really the key. Okay? Your, a bird might know that it can get your attention by behaving a certain way or screaming a certain way. Um, but that's not necessarily, necessarily symbolic in the same way that we think about human language as being symbolic. Okay, One huge impediment to animals speaking the way humans do is the vocal tract and the size of the tongue. So um, we'll talk about it in a minute, but chimpanzees and gorillas do have a very um, unique ability in the non-human animal world to use language. Um, and to acquire language or be able to communicate with humans with any human language. Um, but they aren't able to speak. And that's because their vocal tract isn't built the same way and their tongue isn't the right shape or thickness or thinness, I should say. It doesn't have the same dexterity. So this is one really big challenge to having speech in the way humans think about it um, in the animal kingdom. Okay, so chimpanzees can create a lot of sounds, but not in the same way that humans can, and not the great variety of sounds that humans can make. Okay, so instead of speaking, or instead of communicating with a very symbolic language, um, non-human animals tend to communicate with what we call call systems. Um, and so a call system is just a pattern form of communication that expresses meaning. Okay, so if you want to talk about, continue with the example of chimpanzees, Chimpanzees have what's called a food grunt. It goes, 
And so they're communicating um, with a sound, and they do that whenever they see food. So food is there in front of them. That is an involuntary reaction to the food being present. Um, a chimpanzee can't sneak food um, because they make this sound. No matter how hard they try to sneak across an enclosure or sneak past another chimpanzee with food, they're making these sounds involuntarily. Okay, so that's going to be a call system instead of language as we've defined it. So if we're talking about the differences there between call system and language, um, call systems are communicating um, feeling or emotion or things like that, but only in response to an immediate stimuli. And so, like we said, chimpanzees can communicate um, sound, like can, can communicate the presence of food, but only when there's food there. They don't make food grunts if food isn't present or they don't know that food is immediately arriving. On the other hand, language is limitless. You can communicate about things that have never occurred. You can communicate about things that you've never seen. I've never seen a pink elephant, but I can describe that to you, and you can picture that. Okay, so it's, it's much more broader, um, effectively limitless. Um, like we said, the calls are stimulant dependent, so they have to be in response to a nearby object or a present circumstance. In language, we can talk about past, present, future, imaginary things, um, so on and so forth. Calls are distinct and cannot be combined. So when we're looking at call systems, they're using one call at a specific point in time. We're not combining them. So you might have a call for um, a snake and a call for a bird, but if there's a snake and a bird, you can't communicate that at the same time. You have to communicate those two ideas differently. Um, sounds obviously can, can be combined in limit, limitless ways to produce new meaningful utterances or new meaningful words or sounds. So as humans, we can combine them and even um, make up new words and sounds. And then call st systems are instinctual um, and shared across the entire species. So chimpanzees will have the same food group, whether they are captive chimpanzees, race and human care, whether they grew up um, in a zoo environment with limited human interaction, whether they're completely wild, um, whether they live in Tanzania or Uganda, um, the chimpanzee populations will all have this same call system where humans are actually speaking um, between five, six thousand, sometimes even called seven thousand different languages within one species. So there are some really big differences between call systems and language. Okay, and so those are important to remember that animals don't have language in the way that we talk about it academically. And instead, it's more accurate to refer to those um, sounds as call systems for the reasons you can see here on your screen.